It's hard to believe July is almost over. You know, July is one of my favorite months, probably because of the 4th of July, which happens to be one of my favorite holidays. It's a great holiday where we celebrate the freedom we have here in America, other benefits and privileges. Growing up, I had the privilege of watching the fireworks from, in my opinion, one of the coolest places in the country. You see, my family has a cottage up on an island in Portland, Maine, Peaks Island. And if you're familiar at all with Portland Harbor, you may recognize this Civil War fort, Fort Gorgeous. You see, it sits in the middle of the harbor, and well, from Peaks Island, the perspective is that you look out over the fort to Portland. The fireworks shoot off from Portland and they explode up over the fort. They light up the skyline, they light up the fort, they light up the entire harbor, and it's just this incredible view. As a kid, I remember thinking, why do we celebrate the 4th of July like this? Why do we shoot off fireworks and have barbecues and do this giant celebration every year? What is it that we're celebrating? I had some conversations with people about that, my family, and I remember learning that it was a celebration of our Independence Day, a celebration of declaring independence from Great Britain. But again, what's the point of that celebration? What are the benefits? What are the privileges of that? What are the privileges of being independent? Well, as we think about it in today's society, America has the strongest military in the world. We have many freedoms in our country that other countries only dream of. In fact, there have been many demonstrations and protests around the world recently that have where you've seen the American flag flying because we are a symbol of freedom. One of the other huge benefits is that we can come together and freely worship God in our own way, right here. That's a pretty huge benefit, and I think that's one worth celebrating. As I was thinking about preaching this week, I began to think more and more about this idea of celebration and good times. And this question kept coming back to my mind of what is the benefit of being a Christian? What are the privileges that we have with this relationship with God? Today I want to look at a passage in the book of Romans where I think the Apostle Paul gives some really keen insight into this. Before we read this text, I want to set the stage for you a little bit. I want to give you a little bit of the context as to what Paul is talking about here. You see, in Romans chapter 4, Paul is explaining to the church in Rome that there is evidence of being saved by faith in the Old Testament. In fact, that Abraham was considered to be righteous because he believed God. So again, this idea of being saved or justified through faith is actually not a new idea. But now we have been saved because of what Christ has done for us. So let's take a look. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, strength of character, our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we've been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. As we consider this passage from Paul, he says that through our faith, we have been made right. 
our, our friendship has been restored and we can now have a relationship with God. But again, what is the point? What privileges or benefits come with that? Obviously through that we have salvation and that's huge. But is that it? Is there something more? Or should I just do the deathbed conversion? What benefits come with a relationship with God? The first benefit that I think the Apostle Paul calls out here is that it brings you peace. You see, we are in a battle for sure. You notice that the Apostle Paul, he does not say that if we run into problems, if trials come, but he says, when. Trials are coming. Hard times are coming. This is a spiritual battle. And things are not always going to go the way that we want them to. Maybe it's the loss of a job, the loss of a relationship, maybe the loss of a loved one, maybe the loss of your own hope, maybe the loss of your own health. Paul does not mince words here. He says flat out that trials are coming. But, but, he also says that we get access to the most powerful ally in history. An ally so powerful that he can overcome even death. I don't know about you, but that's the ally I want on my side. That's the guy I want standing next to me when the fighting starts. That's the ally I want because I know that despite my struggles, despite my failings, despite my weakness, he is strong. And that gives me great peace because I know that when he wins, I get to share in that glory. Sometimes I like to think about it like this. See, I love playing basketball and I used to play pickup basketball at the YMCA a lot. Well, a lot of the guys I played basketball with look a lot like me. Five foot nine, maybe a little vertically challenged, vertical leap might not be all that great. Well, imagine you're getting ready to play a game of pickup basketball and all of a sudden, Larry Bird in his prime, LeBron James, Michael Jordan walks in. They look at you and they say, hey, you want to be on my team? Do you believe that if you're on my team, we're going to win? Dude, that's it. Game over. Forget about it. You won. That's it. Everyone else in the gym might as well go home. It's not going to matter. Now, things aren't going to go perfect. I'm going to miss shots. I'll probably lose the ball out of bounds. They'll throw a great pass and it'll hit me in the face. But you know what? We're winning that game. We're winning that game because I am going to have this ally. I'm going to have this guy on my side that is so much bigger, stronger, faster, and better. So we're going to win not because of what I'm going to do, although I may do some good things, we're going to win because of who I have on my team, because I have this relationship with someone, again, who is bigger, faster, stronger than everyone else. So when I make mistakes, when bad things happen, I can be at peace knowing that we're winning. So does your relationship with God bring you peace? Do you know that you're winning? The second takeaway that I get from this passage with the Apostle Paul is, does your relationship with God bring you joy when life goes sideways? Does your relationship with God bring you joy when life goes sideways? You can see that right here in verses 3, 3 and 4. He says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Development. You know, development is a real trendy word in the business world. Before I came to work here at Bethany, I was a training manager with Starbucks. And as a training manager, I had the opportunity to go around to different stores and help them to improve areas where they struggled, to help the staff there create development plans. How are you developing? How are you improving? 
that was always one of the key things. What were the development plans that we had in place for our high potential people? You see, development is critical for our success. As a company, I don't know if you've heard of Starbucks. It's kind of a big company, kind of a big deal. They've been very successful. And one of the keys for their success has been development. The development of their key people, the development of people improving, getting better. We should want to improve. You should want to improve. You should not be stagnant. In fact, research shows from exit interviews that between 40 and 60% of people leave a job because they did not see room for them to grow. They did not see any room for development. They did not see anything more. They didn't see the opportunities that they wanted, and they wanted something more. So we can have joy because God is developing us here and now. You see, God wants to see us grow. And when life goes sideways, God can use it to bring us closer to him. Scripture is full of examples of God refining his people. When we go through fire or trials, God's using that. He can use that to develop our faith. And with that, we become even more reliant on God, even more hopeful and confident in our salvation in the blood of Christ. The third key point that I want to bring up to you that I think the apostle is really bringing out here is, does your relationship with God show up in how you love? Does your relationship with God show up in how you love? Because of what God has done for us, because God has set the example, and because he has given us the ability to, the Holy Spirit in our hearts, we should love differently with him in our lives. This is what Paul's saying right here in verses 5 through 8. He says, And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. God set the example. He loved us first. He paved the way for us to have this relationship. Then God loves us so much that he sent his spirit to fill our hearts with his love. God poured out his great love to us right here on earth, right here where we are now. He has given us his spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the same spirit he has poured out to us so that we can love each other differently. We have God's spirit within each of us, and that shows up in how we love how we support each other, how we care for each other, how we lift each other up, how we hold each other accountable. And we can celebrate this. We can celebrate the victory that we have, this glory that we share with God in how we love each other. We know that we are not alone. To close, I want to share a story with you. And I think this, share, this story really demonstrates these benefits, these benefits of being a Christian. It demonstrates this peace, joy, love that should come as a result of our faith. It demonstrates how we can celebrate our relationship with God and call it nothing but good times, even when they might not always seem good. As I mentioned before, before I came on staff here at Bethany, I was a store manager with Starbucks. And my favorite part of my job, believe it or not, was not coffee. I actually don't drink coffee. Worked for Starbucks for 14 years and I still don't drink coffee. But my favorite part of my job was building relationships with the people who worked for me. I had an assistant manager working for me. His name was Paul. Paul had an awesome girlfriend named Jenna. In fact, I thought so highly of Jenna that I convinced my wife that she should be one of our primary babysitters. I even often asked Jenna, What are you doing with Paul? You're so amazing, and he's just Paul. What are you doing? Jenna was such an awesome person. Well, on Jenna's 21st birthday, she had a seizure in my store. The result of which led doctors to discover a cancerous brain tumor. 
Jenna was a good person. Jenna and Paul were not Christians, and as many of us would, they were asking the question, why? So young, why? Now, they had many friends and family that were saying, I'm praying for you, but they really didn't even know what that meant. Paul began asking me questions about God and church, and through a few of our conversations, Paul and Jenna agreed to come to church with my wife Kirsten and I. We went right to the Raymond campus, actually. But they definitely had some significant reservations about attending church. What if I don't understand anything? How is this really going to help us? Well, that Sunday, Paul and Jenna came to church with us, and Pastor John was preaching from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41, which, if you're familiar with it, is the story of Jesus calming the storm in the boat. For Paul and Jenna, the message was clear. No matter what storms come, no matter what trials you face, I've got you. Two days later, Jenna underwent brain surgery to remove that tumor. And as a result of God working through that situation and through their lives and through the church around them, Paul and Jenna came to know Jesus. In fact, at one point, Jenna actually said that if she could go back and take away that tumor, she wouldn't, because that is what led her and Paul to Jesus. Now that right there is a powerful story. If that's where it ended, that would be a really powerful story. But that's not where it ends. Fast forward two years later. It's February 2021. Paul and Jenna have committed their lives to Christ. They've committed their lives to each other and gotten married. They've even begun serving here at Bethany Church in the student ministry. Jenna's been going for her regular checkups regular scans to make sure that the tumor's not growing back. But this time the doctor has bad news. Jenna, the tumor's growing. You need surgery again. This time we need to go deeper. We know that you just graduated college. We know that you guys just got married. But we need to cut deeper. And we're not sure what's gonna happen. You may have speech delays. You may lose some of your movement ability. You may not be able to have kids. Needless to say, Paul and Jenna were incredibly scared. But this time, they had a different hope. This time, despite the struggle, despite the incredible challenge they're facing, they continued to lean into their relationship with God. Instead of just praying for a miracle, instead of just praying for healing, they continued to pray that God would use them, that God would use their story. They continued to submit to God's will for their lives. In fact, five days before Jenna was scheduled for her second brain surgery, they were at Camp Berea on a service project with a bunch of students and leaders from Bethany Church serving. They actually got up and shared their story with the students and leaders. They shared their story about God's promises and the grace and peace that they have received and how when life seems to go sideways, that that's really when we need to learn it, lean into that relationship with God. Their prayer throughout this time was consistent. God, use us. The day of the surgery came, and due to COVID regulations, Paul wasn't able to go into the hospital with Jenna. So I drove down with Paul. Jenna's twin sister, Emma, and brother-in-law, Miles, came down. And we sat in my truck outside the hospital. Paul was very at peace during the operation. It was an eight-hour surgery. He was much more at peace even than Emma. When I asked him, Paul, how are you so, how are you doing? How are you okay? He had one answer. He said he knew that Jenna was not alone. Jenna was so not alone, in fact, that the nurse that wheeled her from the prep area to the OR, this little Jamaican nurse, and she whispered into Jenna's ear just before she brought her into the OR. Jesus is with you. God loves you. 
She didn't know Jenna. But God did. God was right there with her. God was right there at her side. She was not alone. The sur this second surgery was a tremendous success, both from a medical standpoint and a spiritual one. This time the surgeon got all of the tumor. Jenna has no speech or movement delays. She came home from the hospital three days after surgery. She was at youth group a week later and was able to rejoin us here in Greenland for church 10 days after surgery. Jenna has been able to share her testimony with nurses, hospital staff. She's been able to continue to share her story with her sister, share her faith with her family and friends, all of who are now much more curious about their faith. They've been able to pour their lives into the students here at Bethany, continuing to build those relationships. This struggle has produced perseverance, character, and hope. They have been rejoicing throughout this trial because of the hope that they have that only comes through the knowledge that you've been made right with God through the blood of Christ. You have, they have been made right through the blood of Christ. And that gives them great hope, great peace, and it has impacted how they love. As we go from here today, I want to leave you with a few questions. The first, do you recognize that you have peace with God through faith? Do you have joy that you have a great ally in this battle of life? And does your relationship with God impact how you love those around you? Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you so much for your word, God. I thank you for the instruction manual that you've given us. I thank you that you've given us this word of power, this word of peace, that you've given us a hope. That your word says that you're there with us. You've given us Jesus as an example. You've given us Jesus for our salvation. You've given us Jesus so that we can have peace, joy, love. You've given us your spirit so that it can impact how we live our lives and how we love those around us. God, you are a great God. And I just pray that you would open the hearts of those that need it. Open the hearts of those that are hearing this, God, and that they would come to you, draw near to you, lean into this relationship with you. When life seems to go sideways, when life doesn't go the way that we want it to, when life isn't all that we think it should be, that we can have hope and peace and joy and knowing that this life isn't everything and we're not alone. Thanks for being a great God. In Jesus' name, amen.